Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today we talk about one of the most famous Chopin's pieces. Prelude Opus 28 number 15 in D flat major, so called the raindrop prelude. Why raindrop? I think this is the first question that we have to answer. To answer this question, I will quote for you some excerpts from what Professor Mieczysław Tomaszewski wrote in, um, we can find it on the, on the website of the National Chopin's Institute in Warsaw. I like this because here we have like the the excerpts of some other books as well and I it's already in English so I don't have to translate it even though I have the same words in some other books which I usually quote in my Polish versions of these videos but okay let's now um, read that the rains that fall here writes Georges Saint in her diary are unheard of anywhere else. Our poor Chopin is weak and ailing. And then, in Mieczysław Tomaszewski writes it, in Georges Sam's memoir, we even find a description of how this prelude came to be written in the midst of rainy weather that was so bothersome to the inhabitants of the deserted charter house. Monastery, you know. The music of the prelude evoked imitative associations in Mr. Mrs. Sound, and she betrayed this impression to Chopin. He did not approve. When she asked him, as she writes, to listen to the patter of the raindrops that were indeed falling on the roof, he denied that he could hear them. And he even grew angry about what she called imitative harmony. He protested with all his might against the puerility of those notions of the imitation of things heard. And he was right, she added. However, to confuse the picture a little more, now it's very interesting. It's worth mentioning that a few years later, as the sheet music belonging to one of his pupils attests that Chopin himself called the 15th prelude the raindrop. This is very interesting. Well, first of all, we have proofs in another book of Mieczysław Tomaszewski and in the book of Jean-Jacques Eigeldinger, who checked all the sources, that this prelude, um, or at least the majority of this prelude, but almost all this prelude was actually composed before Chopin went to Mallorca. So the myth the romantic, beautiful story that Chopin composed this raindrop prelude while sitting in the monastery listening to the rain and composing the raindrop is not true. Definitely not true. And also, as I wrote, read to you now, Chopin denied that he tried to imitate and nature in this prelude. We will also not uh, be doing this in this video. Instead, we will make a kind of different analysis. We will try to answer the question uh, why this there is this repetitive note. What does it mean? And then going further, we will answer the question what is inside this prelude? What is the inner message? because definitely the music is quite deep. I didn't play for you part B. I only played part A, as you know. Of course, this prelude is so famous that everybody knows it. Maybe not everybody knows it so detailed, but definitely the melody, everybody can sing. I mean, especially classical music lovers. So, I did it on purpose. I stopped before part B because you later in, in this video you will understand my point. Because I think that first we are bound to analyze only part A 
and only then we can understand later the pa part B and even more I will tell you but now let's sink into the analysis of the piece so everything starts in the D flat major this is a, the, the, the tonality the key which is very warm it gives us kind of feeling of calmness and this is how it all starts even though this melody maybe has a little feeling of some sadness which is far away but I don't think this is really true I think this melody is more about love or about some very beautiful feelings this melody as you will see now goes to the light it climbs up to the light to the sun or whatever to the light and so let's just listen to this first phrase first uh, yes first phrase first musical sentence of part a and now we climb to the light or or relax and this is the end of the first phrase antecedent phrase and then we have the consequent phrase which is exactly the same exactly the same believe it or not no differences and this is the first a musical period that's we can call it uh, and you already know what it means because I told you in some other video okay so two times the same phrases minimalistic music very beautiful melody that we immediately remember this is probably the goal right the accompaniment of the left hand is very very simple and we will talk about it a bit later but now let's focus on the construction after these two repeated phrases we have a new melodic structure we have a new melody and Chopin is changing the key to the minor key so we get rid of beautiful sunny major we go we sink into the sadness and the feeling of loneliness maybe something sad uh, definitely this is a sad melody and now let's listen to this very interesting phrase which is actually very important and now it consists on this motif this is the most important motif one two three four four notes going down again repeating the end of this phrase that we just listened so do you remember if you watched my previous video about the E flat minor prelude when I was describing that Chopin did the copy and passed from the second part of the phrase that we've just heard here he does the same thing let's listen again this to this sad melody I call it uh, the letter B in the big part A so this is part B and the answer and everything is repeated and then again again this answer so it seems it seems that for Chopin this is important 
that's how we what impression we have and what happens next we come back to part a is not resolved and the middle part starts so part a is quite large it consists of three different parts a b a where both a's are beautifully uh, bright i would say uh, calm and bring some kind of love or happiness or something good whereas the middle part is in the minor key and has some sad story behind now before we start analyzing the middle part i want to go to the end of the piece because the whole piece has the very simple noct nocturne like structure a b a of course a prime a b or a prime uh, and now i want to make analysis of a prime because in a prime something incredible happens a prime after the middle section starts exactly like the beginning of the piece we have the same theme <laughs> From here, Chopin writes smorzando, which means dying. And he writes every single letter, smorzando. He doesn't write smorz and the dot. I mean, this is all very important, but I want to, to show you now this because this is really amazing. So, here we have the smorzando. And this Morzando is not only on these notes, but this is also this line here that you can see, you can see the line here. This is all Morzando, Morzando. So the the phrase is dying, dying. The melody, the music is dying, dying. And then here, where this Morzando ends, the forte. Can you see forte here? And now this is shocking. This is probably the only piece of in all Chopin's music when the smorzando ends in forte or forte is immediately after the smorzando. This is incredible and it has a huge meaning. Now, what's more, do we have the sad part B in this a prime no it's we should have because you know like in nocturnes we had a b a like just here we should have the same when the part a comes back we should have a b a and we should have the conclusion here instead the melody is dying and then what happens next the melody is dying And suddenly we have a scream forte in one lonely note like you know ah. I mean for me this note this lonely note forte high in the sky up is definitely and which happens just after the death of music is the most dramatic moment in all the piece probably and it comes where it comes in the place of the sad melody that we had in the first 
part A at the beginning. The, the sad melody will never come back. Instead we have and now listen and the end. So four knows this is this is taken from almost the same motif. Very important and very deep. The sad melody became here uh, something drastic, some, something uh, tragic. And it changed, and the whole part A changed. And what was the reason of the, this change? The reason was the middle part, which we are going to analyze now. So something happened in the middle part of this prelude that made part A not to be a, exactly the same when it comes back. This can be like a symbol of life, of the whole life maybe. We have part A that is sometimes happy, sometimes sad, but this is like a, a person or a music. Then we have the middle part, we, we don't know what will happen yet, but something will happen to uh, that, that will make part A prime to change. And the, the melody dies. Then we have this dramatic scream and the end of the piece. So what happens in the middle part? Now let's make analysis of the middle part. The whole middle part, mm, the accompaniment of the whole middle part is very similar, it's always the same. It's this raindrop note. This is really true that during the whole middle part this note is obsessively repeated all the time. Whatever happens in the melody, this is being repeated all the time. Uh, but this doesn't, it doesn't come from nothing. It doesn't appear just all of a sudden. As I told you before, uh, I didn't want to analyze the accompaniment of part A because, uh, just because of that, I wanted to do it now. Uh, just listen and I will emphasize this very note. section it's it's always there in the part the sad part of B it disappears but then it come back in part A and then in the middle section we have it all the time and now as we already know Chopin didn't think about the rain and probably most likely he wrote it before Mallorca so what it can be and there are many answers um, but I think that if the composer decides to write one note to repeat it for the, all the time, it must be an obsession, but it can be a symbol of time. You know, just like a, a clock, but of course it's faster. But still, this note shows us that the time is always running. That after every single note, we are older. One note older. This also can uh, have the impact, well, not impact, but it, the composer can try to um, hypnotize listeners. This also can be the reason. But definitely it's a very minimalistic accompaniment. This is the only accompaniment that we will hear. 
What is the melody? According to George Sand, and it's a very beautiful comparison, George Sand writes, just, just give me a second because I have to find it, that, oh, here. that what we will just hear now is like sounds like the ghosts of dead monks walk in mournful procession so like walks in the muner funeral march ghosts of monks and as we know chopin sometimes when he uh, was left alone in this monastery he really could he see some ghosts but even before Majorca he had sometimes he he we have a lot of different persons telling us that Chopin when he played the piano he sometimes just flew away from this world he had this kind of um, moments in his life and when he was playing the piano so anyway here we definitely hear the choral in the left hand some are very far and in the bass on the accompaniment of the right hand and this choral maybe these monks or whoever we want will be bigger and bigger grander and grander it will bring us to the dramatic culmination where we can hear bells some very big bells and big drama and this will be repeated again two times so i mean it will appear two times let's listen to this now But then we have the next part of the middle section. Part B. Part B full of pain. Deep pain. When, when we listen to these harmonies which Chopin composed here, we can easily say, we can close our eyes and we can see the face of a person and on this face we can see pain. You know, like this. A deep pain. It can be physical pain, maybe it can be mental pain, 
pain of the soul, pain of the heart, but we have pain. And in my opinion, this is one of the most painful moments in the whole Chopin's literature, in, in all his music. Why? Simply because he is constantly using seconds. Why seconds? You know already, because seconds are um, the main motif that he is using in all the preludes. Here we will have them in the chords. And these seconds, sometimes minor seconds, sometimes major seconds, they bring this pain to us. Just listen to this. Also, this part has a kind of conversation, maybe conversation with between the real world and ghosts. This is the real world. and this deep pain be careful yes this is Chopin four notes to bring us back to the beginning of the piece after this huge sadness and pain incredible and genius so now as we see so much happens in the middle part that part a cannot simply cannot be the same as it was and that's why I'm saying that this is like a symbol of life of a person maybe who was different before something happened just like in this middle part and will never be the same anymore this this prelude is definitely more than just a raindrop and call, calling it raindrop and thinking about you know when you go to the concert uh, and you simply sit in you are one of the audience and you think oh range or prelude uh, this will be a music for relax I mean I will relax myself and you know this is wrong this is a very deep and sad and tragic story maybe personal maybe not we don't know but in my opinion it's very sincere it comes exactly from Chopin's heart. What is this about? We will never know. Can be about history of Poland, can be about missing his parents and family, can be about his love life, his broken heart, can be a mixture of everything. But there is a lot of this word żal, the sorrow, which Chopin himself described his music in one, I don't I think letter, it was in the letter. So this is the so-called Ranger Prelude. And you know, as Georges Saint wrote that these rains are really, not really rains, but tears 
which goes to our heart. I don't know if I quoted this for you, because it was maybe in No, I didn't, because it was in the Polish verse. She wrote very beautifully in her diary, and I have to quote it for you, that she said, in this prelude, indeed, I mean, this prelude indeed is full of raindrops, but in his imagination and in his singing, these drops became tears coming down from heaven to his heart. And with these words in our mind, I invite you to listen to the whole performance of mine of this masterpiece now. Tears coming from heaven to Chopin's heart very beautifully written. Thank you for listening to me today and I invite you for my next episodes. I do it already because after this deeply sad piece uh, I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to leave you in this meditative mood. So thank you and bye bye. Thank you.